Welcome everyone here in this round. Welcome to our webinar about the science behind great sales team and copy. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining in. We are starting here and I want to say Lucas, welcome as well. We are our second panelist besides me. Welcome everyone. Hi, Gerard. Let's get it warmed up. Welcome everyone. Welcome Lucas. And most importantly, welcome all sales superstars. Great having you all here and looking forward to a great webinar with Lucas here and myself. I'm Gerald. Welcome everyone. We are from Createx and Pixcale and showing you a little bit about the science behind great sales email copy. Yeah, it's been so long, Gerald, that we've been speaking about that. And I'm so happy that we're finally doing a webinar on it. Yes, yes, me too. Really, really nice. And looking really forward to the next 45, 50 minutes with you, Lucas. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for making that work that we talk about the science behind great sales email copy. Who of you guys knows that? Say I. You can't make a sale if they didn't open your email, right? And what is more frustrating in the world of SDRs and BDRs when people ignore you, they are not opening your emails, they are not writing back, right? Who sometimes wants to do that with their prospects? Say I. I know that as well, yeah? Ignoring emails is kind of a hard thing. But today we are going to teach you some tactics and some practical examples how you can avoid that, how you can get your people to reply to your email. So you can have a lot of fun, you can be happy and get also hopefully some meetings booked. And I want to ask a little bit in the round here, first of all, what do you guys want? Yeah. And this one here is two practical examples on the very top, two email outbound campaigns. Yeah. First one and here the second one. And there is one clear differentiator. We sent here 175 emails, here 358 emails. But when you look here to the right, you see that we have here a stunning reply rate of 37%, yeah, which is really good, I must say. And we have here a reply rate of 1.4%. And what Lucas and myself want to do today is helping you guys getting as close as possible to the 37 percent i'm not we are not promising that yeah so don't get me wrong 37 is really one of the best campaigns i have personally ever executed yeah yeah and congrats Gerald, on that campaign i mean that's insane 37 percent. that's huge yeah the so replies congrats. were great but luckily it was not the positive replies <laughs> Not all of them. So <laughs> there was a problem before on the ICP, but this is a different story. But still, we know we could get in front of our people and we still got some valuable feedback on the value proposition on certain things. And this is what you actually want to get. Even a no is better than getting nothing back because with a no, you can adopt, especially when you are an early stage startup or launching a new product, you can adopt certain things. So... Why are we here? And Lucas, I would like to ask you a little bit here about this average cold email reply. What's your take here when we look at this number? Yeah, so of course, the reply rate depends heavily on who you're reaching out to, what you're selling, what your deal size is, where in the world you're located. Um, but yeah, in general, what we see a lot of times is that reply rates are really low, like one or five one to five percent and yeah there's just so much noise out there decision makers are super super busy and therefore you need to really stick out if you want to get a reply and then even book a meeting afterwards and yeah so that's why it's super super hard but it is definitely possible to have much higher reply rates awesome so lucas tell us a little bit how can we get there? Is that something realistic? A lot of people always think, and also including some of the people we talk to, some get no replies at all. The, mo the majority of them, when they start with outbound, are somewhere between one and five percent ish. Yeah. And then there are certain things to get like to this 10 to 20% where it starts to make fun. 
Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I like that. It it starts to make fun. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a journey, I would say. So there are so many things that you can try and that you can experiment with, and I think it's healthy to continue experimenting even when you're at twenty percent reply rate. Um, but beyond experimentation, there are a few key things that have been shown to to work and that improve reply rates for emails, LinkedIn messages, or entire sequences. Awesome. And yeah, happy to, happy to go into all these great things uh, during this webinar. And obviously, who of the participants wants to get to like this 10 to 20% reply rate? Say I. And that's where we are going to. So what Lucas already mentioned, what affects the email reply rate? And looking at it, there are several factors. We will not cover all of them, obviously, but I want to highlight two really, really important ones. And on the one hand side, it's the ICP, as Lucas already mentioned. It heavily depends to whom you are reaching out. Are they really in technical ways, in not technical ways? Do they know how to open their emails, to be honest? Yeah, do they use email on a day-by-day -day basis? Yeah, if people are not using email heavily and you reach out via email, it will not work. So you rather should use other channels. Same for the value framework. What is the value you are providing the recipient of your email? What is your product? What is the service? So these are two really important topics, yeah, which obviously you as an SDR, BDR can influence to a certain degree, especially the messaging. I think you definitely can influence, but the ICP, it's hard to influence for you. So you have to deal with that. And where we will look today heavily in is the emails, the subject content, and also the call to actions. Lucas brought a really, really nice playbook with him, how to analyze all the emails you are sending out to make sure you are on top on that site and really writing emails that get you replies. And as mentioned, a lot of other factors like the seasonality, the time, tools, sender name. There are a lot of other things to be considered but focus is today for us on these emails with the subject content and the call to action, obviously, as well. So what are we going to do? We are going to provide you with a playbook to improve, on the one hand side, the skills of every one of you, how to write better emails, but also providing you with valuable tools for writing great sales email copy that will also save a lot of time in the whole research part and will make your email stand out from the crowd so that you get your reply and that you can book your meeting. Lucas, you mentioned it already. I'm very, very happy that we can do this webinar together. I personally know Lucas over a year already and I know what great stuff you are working on. And it's an honor for us, for me, to talk to you today and get started about the webinar about the science behind great sales email copy and lucas tell us a little bit about yourself too that the audience knows what's what's coming yeah sure and i mean i feel honored to be doing this with you thank you for the kind words um yeah sure my name is lucas co-founder of the company based in berlin called Cratext. what we do is we help sales reps to automate the research about their prospects and then um, write high converting personalized emails and yeah in this context i mean we, you and i had a lot of great conversations thank you for sharing all your knowledge with us and yeah we've been on this journey now for a little over a year and on, on this journey we've really learned um, from analyzing millions of emails and engaging with hundreds of high performing sdrs and learning from their best practices Thank you very much, Lucas, and great having you here and really awesome to do this webinar together. From my point of view, quick introduction. I'm Gerald, one of the co-founders of Kickscale. We help sales teams with the best playbook so that they can ramp up their teams faster, that they can book more meetings at the, and at the end, close more deals. This is our mission. And that's why I'm so happy to be here today to have Lucas, because this is one playbook of ours, which we are going to share today with you. There are a lot more and the way other playbooks in our marketplace as well, but exciting to share that playbook with you because it's so important for all the SDRs and BDRs out there. What are we going to cover today? Let's look a little bit into the playbook and what we are going to cover. 
We talk mainly about four things. Number one, the campaign and the sequence. What makes a good outbound campaign? A little bit of theoretical input. We go fast over that, but just that you understand the whole framework, what's coming here. We go into the message, what makes a great email copy? And then we go really into practical examples where Lucas comes in about the research topic, how to do research on your prospect, what's important, and then also the email, how you can write unignorable email. By the way, Lucas, I love the, the statement, unignorable email. Yeah, that's what it should be. So it's awesome. That's what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah, afterwards, we do a little bit of Q&A. Uh, any questions are welcome. If you have any questions, write them in the chat. We are more than happy to answer that and also stay after the webinar here for questions. And we have also some special offers for you in the webinar and after the webinar that you can use that. So really, really happy. And let's kick this off, Lucas, right? Yes, let's get started. Perfect. First of all, you see here the playbook. And a playbook is a simple step-by-step -step guide where you get the right know-how, concise know-how that you can use it and that you improve your email reply rate. What are we going to cover? As mentioned, I will mostly go into these two topics, like what makes a good email campaign and then the message, what makes a great email copy. And then Lucas will take it over where we jump a lot into practical examples and also break it down to the simple pieces what every email should have in there. So let me start a little bit about what makes a good outbound email campaign. And just to let you know, we shared it also afterwards with every one of you guys. Yeah, So you get access to that. You get access to the text. You get access to these videos. So you can take that also after the webinar with you. An outbound campaign, there are hundreds of steps to do that. I have listed here the most important ones. Set yourself clear goals. What do you want to achieve with your campaign? This means, do you want to simply get some replies? Yeah, which means I want to test a little bit some different new target groups. Or do I really want to get the meeting immediately because I'm already selling my solution and know what the target group is? So write really your goals down. And in goals, I mean qualitative goals, saying like, I want to get replies to get feedback from the market. I want to sell my product service, but also number goals. Think of it when like, for example, we, when we look into all the sales leaders in Germany, for example, or in Europe, we prospect them out with LinkedIn. And then we try to group them as much as possible. And so building out our outbound campaign. Think also, how much do you want to make automated? How much do you want to customize? And where Lucas will come in today, how much do you want to personalize? Yeah, because customization is not the same as personalization. Yeah, customization is really when you send an email to all the sales leader with a common problem. Personalization means it's only for one sales leader, for the VP of sales of a certain company based in London, for example, which is targeted to them. Think of the cadences, like what are the touching points? Yeah, How many of them? Do you want to do multiple channels or not? What we see here, do you want to do only an email campaign or do you want to have calling in, text messages, email, LinkedIn, and so on and so forth? Yeah. I encourage everyone to also in between share quality content. Yeah, we live in a world where content is king. Yeah, content is everything. Educate your prospects as well, especially if you're starting, if you are not yet where you see the value proposition is not so clear. You have to also educate your prospects too. And for every seller, persistence, persistence, persistence. Um, Lucas, we chatted about that as well. Yeah, I think persistence over multiple channels, email, LinkedIn, and so on. Is really absolutely important. that's so far really really quick what makes a good outbound email campaign make yourself some goals think of the whole cadence not only one email use all channels you have we focus today on email share the quality content and be persistent to also stay in touch with your prospects now let's look a little bit into what makes a great email call and we've also here put together some things and I want you guys to look in there because this is what's really important. So personal touching points. And that's why 
Lucas, this is where you come in. That's, in my opinion, especially over the last two, three years, this changed massively, right, Lucas? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's become super important over the last uh, years because, yeah, everybody was doing the same approach uh, using templates where you would fill in the company name and the first name. And in the beginning, that was like, wow, somebody sending me a message. Hi, Gerald. Somebody wrote this just for me until you got 20 of those and noticed that, no, it was not <laughs> written for you. <laughs> and yeah, so now um, as the decision makers get used to getting this, getting more quality outreach, now you as a seller also need to become better at sending them even better outreach and just yeah need to interrupt the patterns that they see in their inbox and really um yeah think about what would make you um, respond to an email um probably something that looks different from all the other emails uh, that you're getting nice yeah so let's aim up our game here for oh, yes, personalization yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice Really important, yeah. Especially due to COVID, everyone was sending emails. No personal touching points were possible. Everyone was fluted. Stand out, yeah. Most important thing, that's why it's there at the very first. Be positive, yeah. It depends, but I say in 80% of the emails, be positive, yeah. Be energetic. Like even if you want to do a meeting with them, be positive, really important. Deliver value. No one wants to get an email where it's in like, hey, want to have a chat about something. Yeah, They want to have prospects these days. Customers want to have one to two, three sentences. Why I'm reaching out. What's most likely attaching to the problem. And then also having a clear value for them so that they spend 10, 15, 30 minutes on a phone call. Call to action. No email without a call to action. Soft call to actions like worth a chat. And we share a lot of call to actions also in these playbooks with you that you can try out different things, but also harder call to action, like really nailing down already a time for a meeting, like, hey, do we have time Tuesday, 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. or something like that. In a nice way, make sure you never go away. Yeah? You're always in touch with the prospect until they reply to you that you know what's the status. That should come in every message subtle really with the message to say, hey, you know, we come back. And at a certain stage, people will remember about that things. Lucas, I'd like to get your thoughts as well here on the characters. Yeah, we have seen both ways working, like even longer emails worked at certain cases, yeah, depending a little bit on the region and the geography and the ICP and so on. But in general, the shorter, the better. And we say maximum yeah. 500 characters. That's what we would aim for. Yeah, absolutely. So 500 characters, 100 words. Um, I, I do agree that it depends on the region. So in North America, you need to be even shorter than in Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, and, and also I agree with what you said about long emails can work. It's not that only short emails can work. Very good long emails can also work. But um, yeah, you just need to, then if, if it's not the if it's not the the conciseness of that email, you need to have something else in that email that makes people want to reply to you. Um, yeah, and just nice on answer. average, shorter emails work better. Yeah, that's what we see too. Yeah, start with shorter emails to get some replies and to yeah. take take this on. Especially also since the average email is glimpsed at just for eleven seconds. So in eleven seconds, you need to have people get all the way down to your signature. So if you want them to read all your, the, the entire email. 11 seconds. Yeah. So remember that that's also a really good thing because in 11 seconds, obviously you don't read too much yeah, on certain, certain things. So how to do that now? Yeah. We have prepared also here message rewriting for existing templates. And there are five things which I want to share and then I jump in some best in class templates and then giving it over to Lucas who shares even more the different blocks of emails but try to make it like one to two sentence bytes how does this look like just to give you a short example here when you look at it even here when you see this email this is more or less a bad example you have six, seven, even one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paragraphs with one sentence. So there is no clear flow. 
compared to like here, which is a way shorter, yeah, where you have one, two, three, four paragraphs or sentences even, and here a little bit the longer one, yeah. So make sure to get that in. Even Lucas, this is not personalized yet, yeah. So that's another thing we are adding here. But just in general, but already very relevant, probably if you're sending this to uh, to to the right SDR leader, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's what you wanna wanna have here. There are obviously in every template some tweaking points, but this is what we want to do here. So make it really also that it looks nice. Yeah, this is this is the core essence here. Killer word. Yeah, this is was for me game changing when I started my career as an SDR leader and helped my team as well. Killer word means no filler words. I know I'm not good at that, especially when I'm speaking. I have a lot of filler words, so apologize for that already. But in an email, read it out loud, yeah, which is also the fourth point, and then remove every word here. Yeah? And we will share some examples as well. You see here a whole slide deck in here, like here, how to kill a word, just kill a word. Yeah? So this is the thing. Make sure the message comes across, kill a word, not how to kill a word. You can easily most likely reduce the email length by 30, 40, 50% just by applying that um, presentation, which we have also linked here with killer word. Rewriting customer value, it's about the customer. It's not about the great playbook service we are selling, yeah? It's about that the customer doesn't have a system to document their playbooks the right way to access know-how from experts and apply it. And make sure that you write that in, that in that sentence, yeah. Read it out loud. This was also a game changer. Do that. When you read out emails loud, you find the mistakes in your brain. At a certain stage, you will see, oh, I'm dumped now. Yeah, it's, it's lost because something is not right with the email and send it to your laptop and phone. 70% of people are mobile, depending on the industry, depending on the region. Decision makers starting to travel again, they are mobile, yeah? Not everyone is on their um, notebook, on their laptop. Check it really at how does it look on the phone? Would I reply also on the phone or not? These are the really free theoretical inputs. And now I'm going really quick through some kind of templates. And as mentioned, you get access to that so you can take your time and really look into that. But one thing which worked for us really, really well, especially as now events and trade shows start again, is a personal meeting request. When I'm sending out, and this is fully automated just to let you know, yeah. Um, this, is, this email came from me, yeah. And it was like the subject meeting with Lucas from CreateText at artist in Berlin, for example, in October, yeah? And then I write here, hey, Marcus, yeah, which is my co-founder, for example, I believe that Lucas Kempkes from Createx may be attending artist in a few weeks and so on and so forth. I would love to see a great synergies between what Createx requires and what Pixcalx can provide to their needs, yeah? Would show them I would be great to hear an update on their offering, yeah, and how they could possibly benefit from Pixcalx. That email is completely forwarded, automatically forwarded from actually me to Marcus. And then Marcus is reaching out here to Lucas. Yeah. And Lucas actually sees that I sent Marcus. So that worked really well for us. Lucas sees that I texted Marcus yeah, to say, hey, please arrange a meeting with Lucas. I think it's worthwhile to chat with him. And obviously this worked, especially for decision makers, exec executives really well, yeah. Uh, was one thing we tried on a lot of trade shows, which was really, really cool. And one thing I'd like to share with you here. Another thing, yeah, which Lucas will talk a lot more than as well, is like doing the research on LinkedIn, yeah. Or in general, doing your research. How does this look like? Hi, Lucas, hope you're well reaching out as I found your profile and see that you are a startup providing a great service for SDRs, BDRs and wanted to introduce Kickscale to you. So this is already, this can be customized yeah, towards the needs of a certain group, but ideally it's personalized already. Right. 
to say, hey, we have there some personalization in. Same go goes here. I'm also wondering what your strategy at Createx is to grow your sales targets. Kickscale helps customers like and here some similar customers to Createx, for example, to reduce certain things and to optimize certain things, the value prop here. And then I'm sure Createx like, and then we have here again, the value statement in, which can be customized there, yeah, but can be also the general statement. And these are things which worked for us really, really well. As people see, hey, we spent at least some time to research them on LinkedIn and on certain, certain ways. We have a lot more other email templates in here. One thing I would love to share with you as well is here, thankfully provided by Gong, and thanks a lot to the team by Gong because they're also producing awesome content. They do. 20, yes. yeah, Lucas, please. No, no, I just wanted to say, yeah, they, they do great content. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> like, I, I love their, their, yeah, their insights. Uh, and these are just some call to actions which you can use. Yeah. And some of them work better for different target groups. Use them, leverage them, and we share that also for you because this is so, so powerful using kind of these content blocks here. Okay. Um, Lucas. I take it over to you, obviously, and love to see what's what's coming here from your side. So let's yes. go here. Perfect. And next step to Lucas. And I give the screen share also to you, Lucas. Yeah, perfect. perfect, Gerald. Yeah, thanks so much. And um, yeah, really, really loved those those examples. And um, yeah, just want to quickly go over um, some things that you can, yeah, how you can make sure um, to check how um, how your email is going to be perceived by your recipient. Um, and then I'd love to go over what the right research is that you can do to really show um, that you know who you're reaching out to um, and really wow them with a personalized relevant email. And then we'll also look at some examples of how you can apply that. And yeah, I like starting with the thing with the end in mind. So let's first start about um, talking about how to check uh, if your email is really unignorable and great. So um, yeah, I created a quick playbook for unignorable emails and let's jump into checking your email. So the first thing that I really care a lot about is personalization. Personalization really means you show your prospect that you did not send the same email to 100 people. Because if you send the same email to 100 people, um, you might be lucky and they all think like, wow, that's, this is the best email that I ever got. But most likely they're like, oh, this looks like a marketing newsletter. I'm not going to read it. So it's super important to just yeah see when you, uh, when, when you check your email after you wrote it, is it, is it personalized? Um, is there something that I can quickly change so that the other person notices that I actually spent time on this email? And the second point is you need to make sure that you're actually um, being relevant with your email. So if I reached out to Gerald with, I don't know, um, coffee machines for large offices of 500 people, um, he would probably not be interested in it because he's, he's a small startup. So make sure you reach out to the right people and then you show in your messaging why what you're offering is relevant. And this does not necessarily be, need to have, this does not have to be about your offering. It can better be about the pain that they likely have. Um, which, yeah, uh, which is in general, yeah, um, a good idea to, uh, to do a lot, to talk about the pain and not so much about all the 200 features that your platform has. Because in the beginning with your email, your goal is just to get a reply, um, ideally a positive reply, but even any reply is a good one because that's opening a conversation and then you can take it from there. So don't think so much about closing the deal, really just care about not even getting the meeting, but just getting a response. And while we, we talked about it earlier that long emails can work, I'm a very big fan of super, super short emails because um, especially executives are so so bombarded with emails and it makes so much sense that you just yeah, send them very, something very, very short. And I will later show you my framework that I use that just contains four sentences. 
this. And that really, really works well for, for me at least. And I hope it will work in the same way for you guys. The fourth point that I would check every time you send an email is, is it prospect centric? So are you talking about their pain, about their situation? Or are you talking about your feature A, B, and C and um, all the great things that you think your, your product does, but that your prospect might not care about? One thing that I also think is important is that you use easy language. So really talk like a small child. Um, this means easy words, short words, and short sentences. It means especially that you don't use any complicated words that um, your, your prospect might, might not know. So really think about, could I explain this um, to a small child? Um, and then if the answer is yes, then that's probably great. And if, if it's complicated, then maybe think about, can I break down that sentence? Can I use simpler words? And yeah, really make it super, super easy to comprehend so that um, a busy executive can really understand it, not in 11 seconds, but maybe even in five. Also, one thing that I see in a lot of emails is that, it con that they contain multiple calls to action. So they contain asks to check out a website, check out a white paper, then ask a question about a pain, and then they ask for a meeting. So four things in one email which make it hard to answer. Um, and when we send emails, we want to make it as easy to respond as possible. So we want to remove all friction. And that means one call to action, ideally phrased as a question, short. And um, Gerald, you mentioned Gong earlier. Gong actually did some great research where they looked into which kinds of calls to action work best. And they found that um, calls to actions that just ask for interest, so asking about whether the person wants to learn more about a certain topic, actually work better than asking for a specific time or asking for a meeting in general. Um, so I like to ask just something like, interested to learn more, or um, is this something that is relevant to your situation? Yes, totally. To add here, Lucas, really quick, that's absolutely right. Like the soft call to actions work a way better because you build up some trust, you get the first reply, and then you are in a natural conversation. And then Absolutely. at the certain stage, you book the meeting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 One thing that I also find is um, constantly undervalued is a nice flow. Um, when you have a nice flow, your email is perceived so much better. And it's so much more likely that you get a reply than if you have just a random collection of sentences. It's better that you have really like tell a story in the email and something where you have a nice flow where the second sentence builds on the first sentence and the third sentence builds on the second um, and so on. So where really it's just like a smooth transition from one line to the other. Um, also, I oftentimes see emails being sent always in English. Um, and I think um, of course, it's easier to do that if you if you mar if you target many different markets. But I think, especially in Europe, it makes sense to write in the local language, especially if you are targeting more conservative in um, industries. Unless you're targeting startups, then it's okay to to write in English, um, even in 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 Dach or in France. Um, Gerald, you mentioned that it makes sense to check um, by sending yourself an email to your laptop and your phone. I think that's super important because most emails do get opened first on a phone. So avoid any large chunks of text. Sometimes it's better to just um, hit another uh, enter so that you have more paragraphs but that are shorter. So that you don't have one paragraph, like 20 lines when, when you're reading something on the phone that just becomes unreadable and then people just click, uh, click away. Um, yeah, feature lists, we talked about it. If, keep the, those for the demo and even then maybe not talk so much about your features, but yeah, talk, keep talking about your value proposition and especially about the pain of your customer, not so much um, um, your features. And finally, make sure you keep your, the, the health of your email domain good. And that means that you include an unsubscribe link so that people can unsubscribe when they don't want to hear from you anymore. First, it's mandatory by law. And in addition, 
if if you don't have the unsubscribe link, they will mark you as spam. And this is the worst thing that can happen to your email domain. Because if people mark you as spam, then spam filters will pick up on that and you will land more in spam. And that's definitely something you don't want to have. It's just Thanks, making Lucas. everything yeah, harder. And a really big thing, I think, because also I'm getting a lot of outbound emails. I'm not marking them as spam because I know how hard the work is behind it. But obviously, a lot of people do that. Yeah. And so opt out clause also by law required there. Yeah? But a good hint also for me again, I would say. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so then let's jump into, um, yeah, let's actually jump into the, doing the research uh, for. Like, let's say you want to write a very personalized and uh, relevant email. And what I found is that it makes sense to really look for all the information on the internet that you can find about your prospect so that you can write something that's unique to that person. Because I know this, 95% of sales reps don't do that work because it's a lot of work. Um, and it's hard and it takes a lot of effort and time, but it's so worth it because you get rewarded with lots of replies, positive replies and meetings. And that's what we all want in the end, right? So to get those positive replies at meetings, um, to send personalized messages, what I propose is always, if your, if your ICP is active on LinkedIn, to start on LinkedIn. And that means checking your prospect's LinkedIn profile. Oftentimes you can find something cool on there already. Um, or on their company profile, they might be talking about uh, what they're doing. You might be surprised by how much your reply rate will already improve if you just start referencing something like, hey, Gerald, really love how at Kickscale you're helping companies manage their playbooks. That already shows that you did a little bit of research. It's already so much better than the general, hey, Gerald, hope you're doing well. Totally, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can go so much deeper with personalization. What I, my favorite is definitely that referring to content that the person created. So it might be a LinkedIn post, can also be a comment. Um, and ideally, it's something about a relevant topic that has something to do with what you're selling. But even if it's something about their vacation or their soccer game, it can be something cool because it's something they they post it so they enjoy talking about it so it absolutely makes sense that you can also reference that um yeah i typically suggest to not stop on linkedin i mean if you find something right there that's perfect but sometimes it can make sense to also dig a little bit deeper so maybe go to the company website check um what what their product actually is check um the relevant criteria for for what you're selling so you can see is it a, is it a company selling an enterprise product or more an smb product um you can check out their careers page to see um what their company culture is like you can um in the in the individual job posts you can see what um what strategic initiatives they have what software they use and all these things are relevant might or depending on what you sell, might be relevant triggers that you can use in your outreach. So for example, if you see that, um, that a company is hiring SDRs and in their job post, they mentioned they use SalesLoft and you, you're, you're selling a tool that has an integration with SalesLoft, you can ref refer to that because you know already that they're using SalesLoft. And of course, there are many, many other sources um, that you can look into. And I'm not sure how we're on time, so I'm just going to uh, quickly go through these. So you can check, of course, news articles. That's always a great one um, to, to look at, to, to reference. So for example, if the company achieved something, you can congratulate them on that. Blog posts, the same. Uh, I also really like just Googling what the CEO said, um, because there you also yeah you just find stuff about the strategy of of uh, of your prospects of your of, of your um, of those companies and then of course on crunchbase you can find interesting insights about who their investors are um, maybe you're already working with a portfolio company uh, from their investor and then you can reference that and of course other social media and personalized uh, personal websites are also great great sources for personalized information um, i know 
that it can take a lot of time and it can be very, very hard. So I suggest to have a system to quickly find this information um, so that you know, okay, you typically find information in these three sources and then you go for, for those sources first. And if you don't find anything there, then you go for the next sources. Now, once you've done your research, next step is to write your email. And I have a framework that you can use to send a great email in just four, four steps. It contains four sentences. Um, and let's jump into the four steps. So the first step is, as you might know, as you might have guessed, I'm a big fan of personalization. So we start with a very personalized hook or a problem-based observation. So um, it might be that you noticed that a company um, talks about a certain pain that they're having in their job post, for example. And earlier we, we talked about it being super important that you have a smooth flow in your emails. So the second sentence in my emails typically just has the purpose of connecting the first with the third. The third sentence is where I pitch where I or I tease the value proposition. Um, just so just so much that they want to know more. We don't want to give everything away here because we still want to keep a little bit of curiosity. And then I end with an interest-based call to action as we discussed earlier. Um, just coming back to that second sentence, it's really, yeah, just something that creates a nice flow between the personalization or the observation that you have in the beginning and your value proposition. So let's look at two examples of that. Um, Thanks for sharing, Luke. Just really quick. This is really, really important. Like these four steps are so powerful, yeah? Because I looked already at them, yeah? And I also saw the power of them when someone would reach out to me with exactly that. So really great. And looking forward to seeing the examples too, yeah? Yeah, nice. Yeah, actually, I created an example for you, Gerald. And I did that by looking at your LinkedIn profile. And on your LinkedIn profile, Jared, I saw that you created an, out, an outbound BDRs group on LinkedIn, which by the way, I think it's awesome because you're doing good work for the BDR community. But so I wrote you an email and I said, hi, Gerald, saw that you founded the LinkedIn group outbound BDRs. Really cool that you're building a community for BDRs to learn how to book more meetings. And I wrote this because I noticed it's something that you did. You obviously... Yeah did a lot of work it's not easy to create this community and you di directly see that it's not something um, where i send the same message to 100 people there are not 100 outbound BDRs groups on linkedin yeah that's awesome i really that's that's the level of personalization everyone should get there yeah. and you are on that track so that's good yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're getting there and, and yeah so that's really where we where we want the, the world to be and Another reason why I picked this sentence was because it's something relevant to what I'm going to say next, because we sell a solution for BDRs and therefore it made sense that I would pick something about BDRs in my personalized sentence. Um, so the second sentence is really my segue where I just say, yeah, we talked about BDRs and the next sentence is also going to be BD about BDRs. So I said, enabling BDRs to book more meetings is exactly what Creatix is about as well. And then I quickly talk about a value proposition. So I say, we automate the research for BDRs and help them move faster with personalization. So one sentence, quick, I don't talk about all the features. I don't talk about our free version. I don't talk about um, our integrations. And I did not even talk about um, reference customers. There is, of course, a debate here. You could mention them. I do not because I just want to make it shorter, but that would, of course, be an option. And then I just ask, yeah, curious to learn more. And I leave it at that. And then later in the sequence, I will actually then start asking for a meeting. But not yet in the first, uh, in the first touch point. Um, I wrote down some details on the four steps here. Um, we will share the, the playbook with you later so you can also come back and look into the four steps um, yourself. I also wanted to share a second example, even shorter. Still has the four steps, but um, yeah, when I wrote the sentence for Gerald, I was like, ah, 
it's already two lines, maybe it's a little long. So I wanted to show another short example where I said, hey, Tim, and this is this is a person who works at a company um, um, where they sell to HR organizations. So I said, hey, Tim, seems like you're reaching out to a lot of HR prospects. And so this is definitely something relevant about him. Um, of course, it's not super personalized because I could have sent it to other people as well. But um, still, this this exact email booked me uh, booked me a meeting, so I wanted to share it. Um, and then I have the segue where I say many SDRs tell me personalizing for HR prospects is tough. Really, so just quickly um, have have um, the segue, and already I'm teasing a problem. And then I just say, hey. With Cratex, you can move faster on personalization. So quickly tease the solution. And then I just ask, is this relevant to you? So I'm not asking, can we meet tomorrow at 5 p.m.? And I'm not even asking, hey, can we meet? I'm just asking, is this relevant to you? Tim can just answer yes or no. And no matter what he replies, I can then uh, convert that reply into a meeting. So there we have it, uh, a few quick examples of how to apply the four sentence framework to write unignorable emails. Just again, the four steps are a personalized hook or observation, and then a segue to your value proposition, which is the third step, and then an interest-based call to action. Awesome. And yeah, with that, back over to you, Gerald. Yeah, thank you very much, Lucas. Yeah, this is really, really interesting and great to see because also I obviously learned a lot. So thanks for sharing these um, templates because it proves once more short, concise, really to the point is important because we go into a world where it's getting faster and faster. And on top of that, the most important part, what I truly believe is the personalization part because even you see when there is an email coming in your inbox, is it gone to 10 people or hundreds or whatever? Or you see, hey, this was purely for me. And usually, at least for me, it puts a smile on my face when I say, hey, someone did the work. And doesn't matter if it's AI in the background. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, or a human. So this is what I want to see because it's relevant to me. Yeah. So thanks, yeah. thanks a lot for sharing here. Okay, um, as we only have eight minutes left, yeah, as always, we are certainly over time, yeah. We will do a quick recap. Some people also sent us templates, so thanks a lot for that. We, together with Lucas, will go over them and provide you also feedback and share it with you. Obviously, you get the whole playbook, but we once more want to summarize that in one slide that you see what's really the value, what you get out here and what you should remember out of the webinar. And then we open it up for questions and answers, obviously, to answer some of the questions and more than happy to go over them a little bit. So let's look once more here on what we have been discussing today. And when we look at it, we started with the whole outbound campaign, thinking of the strategic goals, where we want to go towards What's our goal of a certain campaign or an email? Is it getting first a reply? Is it then a meeting, trial, engagement? Depending on where you are also with your company, what you want to get, mostly it's obviously sales. Yeah, and it should be sales. And this is a reply meeting and then towards a sale. Look into how many touching points you want to do. We think the more the better, especially on different channels like here, yeah, and share quality content, relevant content. Well, Lucas, what you mentioned, relevant content, which is relevant now to the persona or to the person you're reaching out. Plan your sequence. I encourage everyone to have at least some thoughts of when do you send an email? When do you send LinkedIn? How to engage that? There are best practices out there. And we've also some of the playbooks in there where we say when to do a phone call, when to do email and so on and so forth. But this can fill another whole webinar. And the persistence topic, yeah? Be persistent. Set the schedule when to follow up, like follow this schedule with certain tools and so on. Stay with your schedule. And also what Lucas mentioned, this automation versus manual work is somehow really, really important. 
research and message. Lucas made it really, really nicely what to research, like the LinkedIn, like company websites, news and blogs, like Googling company name, CEO interview. Yeah, I think this is a great way of getting a strategic points and for funding, crunch based social media, other websites, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Especially videos these days, most of the companies have some videos out there. It's also a great way to see what's going on. Message stru structure. What Lucas, thanks for you sharing that personalization, personalized hook, yeah, or this problem based observation, smooth segue, teasing of the value prop, not mentioning too much of the value prop, and then ending with an interest based call to action. And last but not least, I will not go through all these points, but we have that anyway in the playbook where we say what's really the checklist on an email, personalized, and so on and so forth. So that's great. And I look here on the questions we are getting in. And before we end up, obviously, we want also to take the one or other question here before we really jump into the conclusion. And one question comes in here, which is more like, how much time should I invest in the personalization of emails Yeah, versus not? And Lucas, pa passing that to you, I have also a, a clear, clear, let's say, understanding of that there, yeah, but curious to hear more about you as, from, from your point of view as well. Sure. Yeah. So um, I think there's no one fits all answer for that. So it depends a lot on how big the deal is that you're selling. If you're selling enterprise deals um, worth more than 100K, it's absolutely okay to spend a lot of time on, on that personalization You can because you can spend a half an hour on an email. If you're selling to SMBs or mid-market segments, you don't have that time. So um, you could spend, for example, five minutes or you can also yeah, find ways to make that easier. A quick hint, Createx might be able to help with that. Um, um, yeah, or you just become super, super fast at uh, finding the right information. Thanks, Lucas. Um, yeah, nothing to add from my side. I would also give the same answer. It depends on the deal size, first of all. Yeah, if you have 100, 200, 300k deals, hey, spend time to research, build up that relationship. But obviously, in SMB and mid market, I think it's great to have personalization like with Createx there yeah, because it really helps you saving a lot of time and what i have recognized and also with the sdrs we work together it's not so easy to find something personalized and then also use it the right way and you get it's quite hard for the brain in my opinion to do like 50 personalized emails each day yeah it's it's really hard to figure out. Yeah, it's, it just takes a lot of brain energy, right? Because, um, of course, in the morning when you're, or I mean, it depends. I'm, I'm a morning person. So me, <laughs> the morning person, I, I can quickly uh, write 10 personalized emails. And then in the afternoon when I'm a little tired, then it definitely, yeah. Uh, then I really appreciate all the AI support that I can get. Yes, totally, totally as well. Yeah. Okay. No, thanks for, for the answer here. And I, I, totally agree on that one on that one too yeah another question is more or less a little bit on the sequencing stuff how many linkedin to use how many emails how many calls um how does a perfect solution here looks like yeah i'm more than happy to start here on that question and lucas i think it's same as you it depends for sure but i think the more channels the better yeah and it mostly depends on your icp in my opinion yeah and where they are active on yeah like um we have also a, a customer of ours selling to real estate agents yeah obviously you can reach them via phone yeah because they are curious yeah, course, yeah. to pick up the phone yeah and then this is a great example but if you are selling to like technical people who even don't have a phone on their desk anymore yeah engineers and so on and so forth it doesn't make too much sense to neither LinkedIn because LinkedIn is also more the business sales community fully on there. Yeah, Email is mostly the only way how you can reach them. And so I would think about that. Lucas, what's, what's your take on that? How to define the, the right approach? Yeah, absolutely. I think more touch points, it's usually better, but it makes sense to experiment. And I totally agree what you said um, about different channels. With the real estate prospects, I think it may make might make sense to experiment with 
physical gifts, like send them a yeah. champagne bottle, yeah, <laughs> nice handwritten card, if if your deal size permits it, and even if you just stick to the phone, LinkedIn, and email, um, it makes sense, I, I think, to to vary the type of message that you send. So you can, of course, send just plain text message, but you can also use voice messages on LinkedIn. You can send uh, videos via Vidyard or Loom. You can um, send videos. That's a new thing. Um, or you can, yeah, send memes and GIFs. Yes, 100%. Yeah, experimentation is also key to answer that, that uh, question or to add something. Try different things out and run also these experiments so that you can learn talk with your other people in the organization, other SDRs, think what they have done already and um, to learn here every time. Yeah? Yes. As we are already on time, yeah, or actually already a little bit over time, the conclusion here out of that, yeah, from the webinar is on the one hand side, outbound emails work, yeah, but the thing is really follow a checklist and ensure high quality and ideally high quantity. And on the quality side, I mean the whole part of personalization. For me, a quality email is highly personalized. Yeah. Stick with what works and improve what doesn't. Yeah. And copy from the best and trial and error. Lucas, anything to add from your side as well, like as a one, two sentence final statement? Yeah, I think we've covered a lot of content. I think we can leave it there. But yeah, I think the most important things are personalization and relevance. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, thank everyone. you, Gerald. It's been a lot of fun just having a nice chat with you about, uh, yeah, good, uh, good sales email copy. Lucas, thank you. Greetings to Berlin from Vienna and wishing everyone out there a great day, a great afternoon, a great morning. And next, we will send you the email follow-up with the playbook content. You get also free access to Create Text. Yeah, the link will be in the email as well. So try definitely out. It will save you a lot of time and will give you the right hints to personalize. And you get also free access to Kickscale to build up your playbooks in there and access this playbook as well. And wishing you all a great rest of your day or beginning of your day and hope to see you soon and follow us on our social channels for updates and take care. And it was a pleasure hosting you. Lucas, once more, thank you. Really great having the webinar together with you and wishing you a great day all everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.